you know what we about to do. Come out, let's make this music, let's make this money. People got to shake you through rules for a big brother. Oh. Um, shout out to you for coming. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Yeah. So, for those that don't know, Ibuka had an interview with Banky W. Yeah. Where they trashed out the whole whiskey EME issues. Yeah. All right. So, Banky W said a lot of things on this interview. Yeah. Do you think he has the right to say some of these things? Um, that was Banky, man. Um, OG. People, a lot of people don't know how to. They don't know how to. They don't know how important or how pivotal he is. In terms of what he's been able to achieve in Nigerian music. I mean, it's not the Banky W of now that everything he does there, his wife is in the video. It's kind of sickening and tiring. Let's not let's 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 facts are facts. It needs to stop. It needs to stop. Like it's it's annoying at this point. Uh, even during the interview, his wife also. I mean, it's sickening, it's tiring, like brother. It's not every time. Like in the last two years, his wife has been in like three videos or four. My brother, calm down. Um, but regardless of that, the man has succeeded as like a trailblazer like even though hip-hop and r&b were successful in nigerian music between like the late 90s and the 2000s um pop sort of came in at a very weird time even though r&b artists were still popping it was mr r&b man like like w was doing r&b records and then he started doing r&b in, in, like as afro pop records and then he founded eme eme produced like neola possibly our best run as, as a nigerian artist even though neola is an og tr don't trust the small body um don't be fooled by the small body rather than people like Shady, um, Scales, who against all odds had a six year or seven year run like at the top. And then Wiz, who is one of the greatest Nigerian artists of all time, right? So, and then to the, he is at some point, Banky was top top four, top five in this, in this country at some point, like consistently over a three or four year period. So to, for people to then say that, um, you should have said some of those things during an interview. It's very weird. It's a, it was a tell-all interview. Like, what's the point of a tell-all interview if you are not going to tell all? Do you understand? It's like going to breakfast club and they're saying no comments. They don't come. Do you understand? And some of the things I was saying there is his truth. Do you understand? Those things are his truth. You can't ask people not to say their truth. Sometimes there can be two versions of the truth. Wiz might have his own version of the truth. But at the end of the day, it is his truth. That's it. So to say it's, it shouldn't be saying some of those things is very ridiculous. We have been so we have gotten so used to secrecy and this court-like movement in Nigerian entertainment, in Nigerian music industry, where everybody's just moving furtively. Like, oh, don't let them know. Don't let them know. Don't say this thing, no. Don't say like nobody's going to kill you. But like, I don't understand all this secrecy and uh, you are not working for the CIA. It's just music industry. I don't understand. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. <laughs> All right, you're the industry guy. So you I'm not an industry guy. <laughs> I'm not an industry guy. All right. But I mean, you have some insights into this. Ah, sure, I'm sure I'm not an industry guy. Fine, fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Did Whiskey Down Bank EW have issues before you left? I like that question. Um, yeah, they did. Um, they did. It was there was a Banky W album review, I an mean, album listening party. Um, Whiskey was dating Tanya Mota at the time. It was having like was it R and B W? Or, I can't remember the, the album. The third or fourth album, the R and B W or W experience. I can't remember the title right now. Um, Wiz was dating Tanya Mota and the, the friction had already started. Word on the street at the time, shout out to Nets that was reporting on the stories at the time, was that the person that Wiz really had a problem with was. Um, the, one of the Demiro brothers, not even Banky. Um, the idea was creative control was a problem, um, freedom was a problem, and you know, it's, it's Nigerian artists. And if we had to do some of those things, he probably wouldn't have done it again because he probably understands contracts better now. Like the fact that, you know, what about the said during that, during that interview, he said he, still, he owed him like two or three albums more, but they just had to let him go, right? <laughs> What I understood was that one of them red brothers didn't want to let him go. <laughs> but they just had to let him go because someone needed to let him go. That's, that was a word at the time. That, those were the reports at the time, right? Um, so we came late to the album listening party. Um, it was very obvious. The rumors had been in the news. You know, nothing is, nothing is ever in secret. The rumors had already, even if it wasn't in the news, industry people knew. So it came in, it, was, it came in late, it came, it came in slightly. It was, the atmosphere was sharp. Not very. 
it didn't look cordial, you know? Um, so, at the end of the day, the issues had been ongoing, but after his second album, that's Ayo, they, they had to just let him go. He, he got out of the contract, left the label, and he went and found a star boy. What on the street was after he left the label, he didn't have, he didn't have, he didn't have much, he didn't have anything um, that he had to go start over. I mean, saying that he didn't have, he didn't have anything might have been, an, ex, might have been a, an exaggeration, but it's very possible that he left the label, he gave a lot of things for him to get himself out of that contract. Do you understand? Maybe he sacrificed a lot of things that I would normally not have sacrificed. He didn't talk about a lot of things that he should, he should, have, been, he should have been entitled to and so all these other things. So he left. He wasn't as rich as whiskey. You know, the state of whiskey in 2014, 2015. Yeah. He wasn't the whiskey that everybody thought he was at the time. Um, but shortly after, signed the, the record deal, signed to Sony, signed to RCA, and blew the fuck up. Everybody knows the rest of the story. But the truth is, the truth is, they had there was friction at the time. There was a lot of friction. There was a lot of friction. Sam Clef was Sam Clef was even Sam Clef spoke more about the creative control arguments, but that's just the truth of the matter. It's just a labor situation. Like if you sign a contract, um, I was I was having a conversation with my guy Excel some days ago, and we were. We, we, we were talking about like the new reality where labor services companies, a lot of artists have leverage now, right? And we're, we're, we just made a point and said, look, the only reason artists are signing this, are this free is because they are not signed to majors. Majors are not going to give you this time. They are going to put their feet down and say, this is what we want. And it's a fact. This is what we want. So if you can't do it, you are signed to a contract. If you can't do it, go and deal with your feelings. Go and give us music. That's why you're going to hear that Dre was done with his album, his, his album in 2001. And Jimmy Alvin said, there's no single on this album. Go and find me a single. Find me a single. And you are going to find me a f- single. And that's why you had to call Hovind to write Still Dre. And Dre wrote it and it became a hit. That's why you're going to hear that this guy rapped the battle on letting us down, J. Cole. He, re- he wanted to release his debut album, Slide, Sideline Story. Jay-Z said, my guy, there's no, there's, no, there's no hit record of this album. There's no single. Find me a single. And that was why I wanted to record it who that. Nana's head. And that was like, this is a trashy record. Right? So you have to understand that. If, if this, if this people need to understand how these things work. If your rebel exec is telling you that this thing is not working, right now, it's only it's the privilege that you have that they are telling you that it's not working and you are in your feelings. My guy, they tell you that it's, it can't work. It can't work. Deal with it because you signed a contract. It's, people need to understand that it is a contract. You you typed it like a signature. It did there. In the moment you sign it, you need to abide. I'm a lawyer, I'm so I'm sorry. My sentiments might be here, but it's still a fact that if you sign a contract, you should abide by the terms of the contract. Except for except maybe the the other party breaches their funda- a fundamental term in the contract. If they don't, my guy, abide by the terms of the contract. It's that simple. So are you saying Whiskey is the, is the victim in this whole, is not a victim rather in this No, it, 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 from a human perspective, right? From a human perspective, people are, people are never going to hear the full story of what happened here, right? Mm-hmm. People are never going to hear the full story. From a human perspective, there might, be, there might have been some human wrongs committed against them. Mm-hmm. As much as we have a contract, there, might, there are also situations where in labor bosses do access wrong, right? Maybe you don't remit enough. Maybe some money comes in. Maybe the guy goes to a show, performs all night. It was meant maybe the contract place I should get it should be a 60-40 split. Mm-hmm. Right? And then the label gives gives me the 20-20% split and start telling him that, oh, we spend this money on airplanes, we spend this money on uh, agents, we spend it on uh, food. We spend you understand those situations, man. man it's it happens a lot in in that labor situation. It doesn't mean that sometimes that's not the case. Because if your contract states that out of the money for that show, expenses are going to be deducted. Yes, expenses should be deducted. But what I'm saying is sometimes people blow it out of proportion and then the artist has to accept it because sometimes they don't want to argue. And sometimes it piles up and it becomes resentment. But usually, in this particular situation, based on the facts that we know and based on the things that we know, if you sign the contract, my guy, it is a contract, a contract. It is binding. Now, if one of them Breach the fund. If the, the label breach the fundamental term in this contract, we don't let, know for a fact. But from what we know, he he got he got the he got the he got out he got out easy. He got off easy. He got off easy because those guys probably didn't want a court case, a drawn out saga. They probably didn't want to slow down his career. Imagine risk that had a court case for three years. Yeah. Imagine one thousand would have happened. Think about that. 
What has not happened? Come closer wouldn't have happened. So regardless of how he wants to look at it, they did me a huge favor. Most people wouldn't have done him that favor. Because my guy, you signed the contract. I know of cases right now where people, because you signed, people, because someone signed the contract, someone is saying, my guy, buy out this contract. Oh, I've not done enough for you. Buy the contract out, my guy. Buy it out. Because you signed it. If it is, if if it, if it was good enough for you when you signed it, then stick with the terms of the contract. It's that simple. So is, is, is it a victim here? In some cases, it might be because we don't know the, front, the terms of the contract. But from what from what we know, it got off easy. Really got off easy. And that's facts only.